Please remove your conversations from the floor and please clear the well. The chair lays before the House an enrolled resolution. House Joint Resolution 98, Joint Resolution Providing for Congressional Disapproval under Chapter 8 of Title V United States Code of the rules submitted by the National Labor Relations Board relating to standard for determining joint employer status. The House will be in order. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the Chair will postpone further proceedings today on motions to suspend the rules on which a recorded vote or the yeas and nays are ordered or votes objected to under Clause 6 of Rule 20. The House will resume proceedings on postponed questions at a later time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Alabama seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass Bill H.R. 3602 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 3602, a bill to prohibit the intentional hindering of immigration border and customs controls and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Moore, and the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Alabama. This will be in order. Please take your conversations off the floor. Mr. Speaker, the House will be in order. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Alabama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and to insert extraneous material on H.R. 3602. Without objection. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlemen, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, President Trump secured our borders. Then just over three years ago, Joe Biden took to office of president and immediately did exactly what he had promised on the campaign trail to do but the House is not in order. Please take your conversations off the floor. The House will be in order. Gentlemen, is recognized. Joe Biden took to the office of the president and immediately did exactly what he had promised on the campaign trail to do. He reversed the Trump administration's immigration policies. By doing so, the new president let the world know that America's borders are open. President Biden rescinded the Remain in Mexico policy, prevented the removal of illegal aliens, and blocked immigration and customs enforcement and customs and border protection from enforcing immigration laws. In the weeks and months that followed, President Biden terminated the Trump era policies aimed at preventing fraudulent asylum claims, ending catch and release, increasing criminal alien removals, and preventing illegal immigration. And we're still in the midst of the Biden administration's extended result. The biggest mass illegal immigration in the history of the United States. More than 7.6 million illegal aliens have been encountered by CBP on the southwest border. There have been 38 straight months with more than 100,000 southwest border CBP encounters. The Biden administration has released nearly 4.7 million illegal aliens into America's communities, in addition to at least 1.8 million known gotaways avoiding apprehension. At least 357 illegal aliens on the terrorist watch list have been encountered by the Border Patrol along the southwest border. No doubt more have evaded detection. And all of this is just on the southwest border. Our northern border is also seeing record high numbers of illegal aliens encountered by CBP. Early last year, House Republicans acted to secure our border. 
We passed HR 2 to secure the Border Act to end the abuse of U.S. immigration system, whether by the administration's cartels or the illegal aliens themselves. Had Senate Democrat leadership not refocused or refused to debate H.R. 2 on the Senate floor for more than 330 days, perhaps we would not still have a mass lawlessness on our border. In the meantime, we keep reading media reports that President Biden is looking to use his executive authority to quell the border chaos. But each time, the open borders advocates tell Joe Biden not to use that authority, and each time he bends to their wishes. Americans are outraged that our, our own federal government turns a blind eye to the chaos that has been created. Americans are tired of seeing mobs of illegal aliens beating up New York police officers, watching endless numbers of illegal aliens stream across the southwest border, and hearing the heart-wrenching details of the deaths of innocent young men and women, including a U.S. Senate staffer, caused by illegal aliens who should not have been here in the first place. So today, House Republicans are trying again to make our Democrat colleagues and President Biden take this border crisis seriously. H.R. 3602 will restore successful Trump-era policies and remove the rewards and incentives the Democrats have used to entice people to violate our own nation's sovereignty. Division A includes provisions in the Homeland Security Committee's jurisdiction that help secure our border. For instance, it includes provisions to require border wall construction, to increase the number of Border Patrol agents and provide them with bonus pay and to, to deploy additional technology to that border. Division B includes provisions in the jurisdiction of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. Title I reforms the asylum process to deter fraudulent asylum claims from aliens, including economic migrants, and ensures that aliens granted asylum are truly being persecuted by their existing government. Title II... Please take your conversations off the floor. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Title II ends the Biden administration's catch and release policies by clarifying that the DHS secretary must remove and detain illegal aliens who arrive at the border or place them into remain in Mexico type programs. There are no other options. The aliens cannot be paroled or otherwise released into the U.S. unless an immigration judge grants that alien asylum or some other immigration benefit. Title III directs the Secretary of State to renegotiate successful Trump policies, asylum cooperative agreements, and remain in Mexico program with his diplomatic counterparts. Title IV fixes the disastrous Flores settlement that rewards illegal aliens who rent or buy children to pose as family units to avoid detention. Instead, it keeps legitimate families together as they await adjudication in their asylum claims. Title V requires that unaccompanied alien children be immediately and safely returned to their home country, as we already do for unaccompanied children from Mexico and Canada. Rather than traffic abandoned and then exploited in our own country, it helps our government's role in child smuggling and trafficking, a role that is morally reprehensible. Title VI applies the same penalties for visa overstays as we currently do for illegal border crossings. Under current law, it is a misdemeanor to cross the border illegally, a felony to cross it repeatedly, and yet only a civil infraction to overstay your visa. Title VII ends the Biden administration's abuse of parole authority, abuses which circumvent immigration law. Parole is inherently a case-by-case -case review based on individual circumstances in which the rigors of the law are inappropriate. Parole by category isn't parole. It's a new law by fiat. Instead, such changes must be considered passed by Congress in a nation that respects the rule of law. Title VIII, finally, creates two grant programs. The first provides funding for states to construct or improve border barriers and border technology. The second reimburses states for money spent on law enforcement activities related to the border. H.R. 3602 will help end the border chaos and ensure respect for U.S. immigration laws. And with that, sir, I'll reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I grant myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to this foolhardy attempt to pass for a second time one of the most draconian immigration bills this Congress has ever seen. This rehashing of H.R. 2 
is a joke. They say that the definition of insanity is trying something over and over, but expecting different results. Yet here we, are, here we are, debating a bill once again that continues to have no chance of being enacted into law. We know that because H.R. 2 has been brought up and failed twice in the Senate, most recently garnering a mere 32 votes. This is nothing more than pure political theater. I truly don't know what it is that the Speaker wants us to suspend the rules of the House, or our disbelief. My Republican colleagues continue to show us that they, are not serious, that they are not interested in finding real solutions to tough issues. Let's be very clear about what this legislation would do. This, ba this bill serves as a wholesale ban on asylum and the end of parole. No one would be able to seek asylum in the United States if they crossed between ports of entry, or if they had, or could have had even temporary status in a third country. The last time we considered this bill, Democrats offered a variety of amendments to exempt the most vulnerable from some of the, these requirements. This included those fleeing communist and totalitarian regimes and unaccompanied children. The majority was not willing to exempt children under a year old. When it comes to parole, Republicans were not willing to support codifying the vital U Uniting for U Ukraine parole program, which has aided over 100,000 Ukrainians fleeing, fleeing Putin's unlawful invasion of Ukraine. This is not serious legislation. Given their slim margins, it is unclear that Republicans could even pass H.R. 2 in its entirety today. As such, the majority had to make some tweaks to the bill to try to convince any Republican holdouts that their marquee bill is a good idea. For example, this version removes H.R. 2's nationwide E-Verify mandate. If passed into law, this would have decimated our economy, especially our agriculture sector. Some Republicans previously voted no because of this provision. But, re but removing this title appears to be doing little for the bill's prospects. Other Republicans, including the chairman of the Immigration Subcommittee, support this provision and have expressed concern over its removal. This whole exercise is, hu is a huge waste of our time. Not only does this bill not have the votes in the Senate, it probably does not even have the votes to pass the House today. In what appears to be an effort to gain the support of Mr. Roy, an early opponent of the Speaker's approach to the foreign aid package, the E-Verify section was replaced with a new grant program to reimburse states for, quote, enforcing immigration law, unquote. This is intended to reimburse the state of Texas for the money Governor Greg Abbott has spent defying our federal system with Operation Lone Star, even though numerous components of this operation have been ruled unlawful by the courts. If the hope was that this provision would earn the support of Mr. Roy, it seems to have failed, since we are only considering this bill under suspension because he and others wouldn't even support moving this bill out of the Rules Committee. So not only is this not serious legislation, this is not a serious process. And let's remember how we got here. After passing H.R. 2 in May of last year, Republicans spent the next seven months saying that H.R. 2 was the only way to secure the border, even though they know that it cannot become law, having been so overwhelmingly rejected by the Senate. <coughs> then they insisted that the price of helping protect Ukraine against Russian aggression was enacting harsh border enforcement legislation. Senate Republicans even managed to convince some Democrats to agree to a border bill in the Senate, a bill that Minority Leader McConnell called the toughest border bill in 30 years. But Republicans could not take yes for an answer. Donald Trump said that he didn't want to do anything that might help at the border in an election year because he wants immigration as a campaign issue. Other Republicans said it out loud, too, saying they don't want to, quote, do too damn much to help a Democrat, close quote. Folding to the cult of Donald Trump, and just hours after the 370-page text of this bill was released, Speaker Johnson declared the bill dead on arrival in the Senate, and that bill was released. Speaker Johnson declared the bill dead on arrival in the House, with the rest of the Republican conference quickly falling in line. Republicans showed clearly what Democrats have been saying over and over again. 
that they don't want to do anything that would help address our broken immigration system. They just want to talk tough without doing the hard work of actually legislating. Now, this version of H.R. 2 is being sent to the floor to give Republicans cover to vote for necessary aid for our allies, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. If this political theater and show vote and show vote of this bill is what they need to pass vital aid to Ukraine, Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, then fine. But let's not pretend we're accomplishing anything here today. This is a waste of our time. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Siskamani. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to my friend from Alabama for yielding me time. I'm glad to see this body taking up my border security legislation today alongside these important other packages as well. Now, the gentleman from New York calls this a joke. Well, I don't know what he finds funny, but nothing about this situation is funny. It's not funny to our Border Patrol agents. It's not funny to my border communities. And it's certainly not funny to the hundreds of thousands of women and children being trafficked by the Mexican cartels in our southern border. There is nothing funny about this situation. Let's be clear. Our border is broken and has been for a long time. And at a time where our world is most dangerous than ever, and our adversaries are emboldened, protecting our homeland is our most critical priority. Attacks by our adversaries have spurred the urgent need to support our allies. Congress should be able and must do both. And it all starts with a secure border, Mr. Speaker. This bill takes major strides in addressing our poorest border. It would immediately restart construction of the border wall, end the disastrous catch and release policies, and streamline the asylum process. We have seen policies that work, including Remain in Mexico and the silent cooperative agreements in the Northern Triangle. This bill would start the process of going back to those policies and, in turn, stem the flow we're seeing. The United States Congress is the most powerful body in the world. We must be able to support our allies while we protect our homeland as well. The world is looking to America for strength, and our, and our country is looking to Washington for leadership. The administration is nowhere to be found has been nowhere to be found. We must step up and fill the gaps the White House has left by their weakened foreign and domestic policies and stances. Since January of 2021, there have been more than 7.6 million migrant encounters in our southwestern border. In addition to this staggering 7.6 million, estimates suggest upwards of 1.8 additional illegal immigrants that, that evaded Border Patrol and, and enter our country. Most notably, 169 individuals on the terror watch list were apprehended at the border in FY23. These are no longer just families coming to America in search of a better life. In FY24 so far, we've witnessed over 20,000 Chinese nationals at the southwest border. Encounters of Chinese nationals have already surpassed all of last fiscal year. I recently went to Israel and personally walked through the devastation of October 7th. Make no mistake. Hamas wishes the same fate on Americans. This bill does not just address a major national security weakness, it solves a crisis that millions of Americans already live with. In my district alone, we have seen close to 1,000 migrants per day enter our communities. Arizonans have seen a spike in high-speed car chases and illicit activity by Mexican cartels. In FY 2023, fentanyl overdoses in the U.S. rose above 112,000. Fentanyl overdose deaths becoming the number one cause of death among young people in my home county of Pima County. My colleagues from New York to Oregon have seen the effects of our border crisis in their own communities. We must send a signal that the U.S. southern border is not open. Our adversaries, whether it is the Mexican cartels or the CCP, will seize any moment to take advantage of American weakness. Each of these packages take a firm stance to stand with our allies in Israel, Taiwan, and Ukraine. In turn, my bill takes a firm stance in American strength in our homeland. See, Mr. Speaker, this is personal to me. Not only is it the number one issue in my district, 
and it's a number one issue for Republicans and Democrats in my district as well. But I'm a first generation American. I immigrated here with my family when I was a young boy. Today, the open border policies of the Biden administration are not the way of the American dream. It dilutes and diminishes the efforts and sacrifice of so many immigrants that came before us to open up the way, invest in this country, and became Americans. It is fueling human trafficking, enabling the cartels, and flooding our country with fentanyl and other deadly drugs. America is a land of opportunity. I believe that. I'm a proud product of the American dream. Living it every single day, Mr. Speaker, but the crisis at our southern border is not the American dream. It's a nightmare. We must take steps to secure our southern border immediately. This legislation is a start. I urge my colleagues to vote yes. And with that, I yield. I reserve, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I now yield two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from Mississippi, Representative Thompson. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the gentleman from New York for giving me the time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this sideshow. Consideration of H.R. 3602 today is a cynical move meant to appease Republicans who refuse to provide aid to fight autocrats and terrorists unless they get to deport migrant kids first. These extreme mega Republicans care more about scoring political points than finding solutions and refuse to consider the bipartisan Senate Border Security and Immigration Enforcement Bill. They're having a hissy fit after the Senate threw out their unconstitutional articles of impeachment against Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas. They care only about electing Donald Trump, and they are happy to rip up the Constitution, create chaos at the border, and prop up Vladimir Putin to do it. This is why they are insisting on rehashing this terrible bill, which at zero chance of passing the House, let alone the Senate. H.R. 3602 shifts all border processing to ports of entry without providing any additional resources. The bill doesn't fund a single new officer at ports of entry, where more than 90% of fentanyl is interdicted. Our ports of entry are already short over 4,000 officers. When the Homeland Security Committee considered a version of this bill last year, Democrats tried to add an additional 1,700 officers, but Republicans refused. Furthermore, this xenophobic bill would strip DHS funding from any community or religious organization that help migrants. It is so overly broad that organizations that place water in remote areas of the desert or provide a pregnant mother a safe place to sleep would be ineligible for DHS funding. This bill is so overreaching that it would force the American Red Cross. Uh, may I have an additional? The gentleman, additional minute. Uh, I thank the gentleman. This bill is so overreaching that it would force the American Red Cross to verify every person's immigration status before providing life-saving services following the natural disaster. This is just in inhumane. Furthermore, H.R. 3602 is so poorly drafted that it would bar many U.S. citizens from boarding commercial flights. This bill sets requirements for forms of identification that can only be used through airport security, but the list doesn't include driver's license from Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, Guam, or other U.S. territories. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, this bill is too extreme. It's just bought, brought here today to, extreme, to appease certain elements of the party. Republicans must put an end to this chaos and dysfunction and get back to serious legislating. Vote no on this unworkable bill, and I yield back. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman Alabama is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield two minutes to my good friend and chairman, Representative Jordan. I think the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Mr. Speaker, a joke is what the Democrat called this bill a joke. It's not a joke to put back in place the policies that worked. In fact, I would call that common sense. 
Remember what happened on day one of the Biden administration. They said, we're going to get rid of the Remain in Mexico policy. We're going to stop building the wall. And when you get here, you will be released. Well, who the heck wouldn't come if that's the policy? And that's exactly what's happened on pace to get to 12 million migrants entering the country in the Biden administration. So this bill fixes those things. It says we're going to build the wall, provide money to do so. We're going to go put back in place the Remain in Mexico policy, which worked. And we're going to end this catch and release. And guess what else it does? Guess what else it does? Changes the way they're doing parole. The very program this administration put in that allowed the individual to be released into the country who killed Lake and Riley. That's not a joke. That is good policy. Policy that will help protect Americans. Policies that make common sense. So I appreciate the gentleman from Arizona for sponsoring this legislation, Mr. Moore for managing it on the floor, and the Judiciary Committee who's worked on this, Republicans on the Judiciary Committee who've worked on this issue for a long time. This isn't quite H.R. 2, but it's close, and it's the policies that need to happen. Again, understand the magnitude of the problem. On pace to get to 12 million migrants coming in this country in a four-year time span. That's what the Biden administration has given us. Everyone knows that's wrong. Everyone knows the policies they've done intentionally, deliberately, willfully on day one have been harmful to the country. Democrats know it. Republicans know it. Independents know it. Polling shows it all across the country. So let's take a step in the direction of fixing it and pass this legislation. I yield back. I reserve. Gentleman Speaker. reserves. Gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I now yield uh, two minutes to the distinguished gentlelady from Washington, the ranking member of the uh, Immigration Subcommittee, Representative Jayapal. Gentlemen, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in strong opposition to this cruel, unworkable, and inhumane, modified version of the Republican Border Bill, H.R. 2. What is the point of this exercise? The majority could barely pass this legislation last year over bipartisan opposition, and now it's going to magically pass it in the House with a two-thirds majority? Give me a break. That's not what hap what's happening here. They say that when someone shows you who they are, you should believe them the first time. Well, the majority has shown us who they are on this issue over and over and over again. They consistently reject bipartisan solutions, including a bill that was drafted in the Senate by the second most conservative Republican senator, and yet the majority and Republicans in the House and the Senate decided to kill that bill. You know why? Because Donald Trump said, kill the bill because we want to keep immigration out there as an issue that doesn't get solved, doesn't have any solutions, but has some empty talking point messaging bills that continue to demonize immigrants and create xenophobia in a country that has depended on immigrants to build this country and continues to. Republicans have said it out loud over and over again. Don't want solutions, don't want to solve problems, just want to preserve the issue for the election. This bill is going nowhere. So let's just be clear about that. The situation at the border is directly linked to the fact that the legal immigration system has been left in chaos because it has not been modernized in 30 years to meet the needs of this country. Who has stopped that modernization? Republicans, over and over again. When the legal process is so backed up that it takes decades for legal residents to get their children into the country, when employers simply can't get the workers that they need to hire approved because there's a backlog of two million people who haven't been processed, or when we have so few immigration judges that asylum seekers wait for over eight years to get their cases Mr. heard. Mr. Speaker, I yield the gentlelady another 30 seconds. When people wait, asylum seekers wait over eight years to get their cases heard, then yeah, people turn to unscrupulous actors, including cartels, who promise them that they can get in by going to the border. The only people talking about the open border and encouraging people to come across the border are Republicans who continue to put that message out there. But are we looking for solutions, Mr. Speaker? No, we're here debating a bill that has no chance of becoming law and is an empty messaging bill that does absolutely nothing to reform our outdated immigration system. Let's get back to governing. I yield back. I reserve. 
Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Alabama is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to my friend from another border state, Texas, Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy is recognized. I thank my friend from Alabama. Um, the gentlelady's right in part. And I, we're here for, for two reasons. Yeah, this bill will not become law. There's no question about that. And it will not become law for two reasons. The first reason is that our Democratic colleagues refuse to address the crisis at the border and, in fact, want to perpetuate it, encourage it, and cause more of it. The second reason it's not going to become law is because Republicans continue to campaign on securing the border and then refuse to use any leverage to actually secure the border. That's the reason. Those two reasons right there. That's why this will not become law. Let's be very clear with what we're dealing here right now. We know the numbers. We can talk about the numbers, the 7 million that have been released into the country, the 2 million plus gotaways, the extent to which we've had 1,000 pounds of fentanyl pouring across our border every month for the last six months, the 24,000 Chinese nationals, 85% of whom are adult, single individuals that have come across this border since October 1, which is more than the entirety of fiscal year 23 and certainly more than the 381 in the last year that the policies of President Trump were in place. The reality is we are being put in danger. The American people are getting killed. Lake and Riley is dead because of the policies of the Biden administration, specifically the parole policies that release people into our country to kill Americans. That is what has been happening. And yet we're going to do nothing about it. We have legislation right now that would fix the problem in significant part, H.R. 2. We passed it a year ago. It is a great bill. I support the bill. I support what's in it. It changes the policies. Frankly, policies that President Obama and Jay Johnson ask us to change, like TVPRA and Flores. It changes the policies of abuse, of parole and asylum by this administration. We should get it signed into law. But the only way to force Democrats to do it is to use leverage. And we're not going to. Despite the fact that the Speaker of the House repeatedly has said in January at the border, a trip I didn't take because I knew full well what would happen. It would be a show trip. And that's exactly the truth. If President Biden wants a supplemental spending bill focused on national security, it better begin with defending America's national security. We wanted to get the border closed and secured first. He said in a letter in December, supplemental Ukraine funding is dependent upon enactment of transformative change to our nation's border security laws. Well, here we are today with a sham vote. And let me be very clear, the people saying that we stopped HR2 in the Rules Committee and didn't allow it to get connected to or get it to allow to be attached to the Ukraine bill, they are lying. That is not true. It was a separate rule, a separate vote designed as cover cover for Republicans to try to vote for a Ukraine funding bill without securing the border of the United States. And yes, I do agree with that point. That's the truth. I yield back. I reserve, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from New York recognized. Mr. Speaker, I now yield uh, one minute to the distinguished gentleman from my home state of New York, Mr. Swazi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Swazi is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Roy, the histrionics and the hyperbole are not working. You just said so yourself. It's not working. We're, we're about to pass. It's not working. It's not working. The bottom line is... The gentleman will suspend. House will be in order. The bottom line is, is that we... The bottom line is that we face issues that are very serious in our country, including the border. There's a crisis there. And we... And we have to address it by doing what we're doing today and tomorrow related to the foreign aid bill. We've got to work together. We have to find compromise. We have to buy, find bipartisan solutions. Every problem we face in our country is complicated. And you cannot solve complicated problems in an environment of fear and anger. People have to sit down and work with each other. I know Mr. Moore is a very good man. There's a lot of good people. Uh, on the Republican side as well as the Democratic side. Let's work together and solve these very serious issues we face in our country. We had a bipartisan solution by one of the most ethical, honest, hardworking, conservative Republicans in the United States Senate, James Lankford. And we didn't go forward with that bipartisan deal, bill because President Trump and others said, we don't want to give Biden a victory. We want to campaign in the chaos. Mr. Speaker, I yield the gentleman an additional minute. Thank you, Mr. Nadler. 
So they said, we don't want to go forward with that bill because we want to campaign on the chaos. We, we don't want to give a, a victory to the Democrats. It's not a victory for Biden or for the Democrats, it's for the United States of America. And for us to move forward as a country, we have got to work together. I see the people up here in the gallery today, people watch television, they read the newspaper, and they're sick of this. They don't want us fighting with each other. They don't want us with the histrionics and the hyperbole. They want us to sit down and negotiate a settlement. H.R. 2 was tried before, it didn't work. Let's say you get everything you want. Let's say Trump gets elected. Let's say that you win the House, you win the Senate. I, I don't want that to happen, obviously. But let's say you get everything you want. You won't get enough votes in the Senate. You'll still have to negotiate a bipartisan compromise. People have got to learn to get back to the basics of legislating and negotiating and working together to solve the problems that the people of America demand that we solve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back. Gentlemen, reserves. Uh, the, the, the members are reminded to direct their remarks to the chair, and the chair would remind members that the rules do not allow references to persons in the gallery. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized. Uh, I yield one and a half minutes to our friend from Arizona, Mr. Biggs. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. You know, I will say this uh, about my friend from New York, Mr. Nadler. He's right on some points, but he's wrong on some points as well. And one of them is this. This bill gives money to the states to deal with the calamity that has been caused by the Biden administration. So, years ago, when Janet Napolitano, who was in the Obama administration, in the same position that Secretary Mayorkas is in, she demanded that the federal government pay for the damages caused by illegal migration at that time. She understood, just like Katie Hobbs, who is the current Democrat governor of Arizona, says, we've got to have resources. Please understand that you don't understand what's going on on the border. I will say you, one thing, uh, my friend from New, York, from New York, is correct. This is a show, this is a show vote. H.R. 2 has been sitting in the Senate. It should have passed. It would have taken care of 90% of the problems on the border. I know, I wrote most of those provisions, along with my friend Chip Roy, and I will tell you this, if we do not pass this, don't come to us if you're living in New York and say, we're in trouble, because you have perpetuated it. This is the time to pass this piece of legislation. The process has been crappy, but this is the time to pass this legislation because it has to be done. Yield. I reserve, Mr. Gentleman Speaker. reserves. Gentleman from New York is recognized. I reserve. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Alabama is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I represent, I mean, uh, I yield uh, one minute to my friend, General Perry from Pennsylvania. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Duplicity. This is a lie. It's a deceit. It's trickery. It's chicanery. Fraud. It is a swindle. It is a scam by design, Mr. Speaker. This is a pig in a poke. You don't even get the pig, though. You just get the bag. We told everybody, we're going to do border security. We're going to attach it to this bill. And this is all going to go to the Senate. And then the president's going to sign it. But that's not going to happen. Border security is not in here. This is a separate bill designed to fail. Designed to fail. You're getting a box sent to you in the mail that says border security. If you're Lake and Riley's parents, if you're Kate Steinle's parents, you're getting the box that says border security and you open it up and there's nothing in it. You're supposed to believe we're doing something here, Mr. Speaker. But in reality, we're just tricking you and swilling the American people again. This is an abomination. I'm going to vote for the bill, but I want everybody to know it's a sham. I yield. I reserve, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman, gentleman reserves. Gentleman from New York is recognized. I reserve. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Alabama, Alabama is recognized. Yield one minute to our friend from Louisiana, Representative Scalise. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise in strong support of this bill. But, Mr. Speaker, for years now, this House Republican majority and before we were a majority, have been calling on President Biden to secure America's border. 
We have been trying to engage President Biden in a negotiation to fix the problem. We've put together legislation, and H.R. 2 has been mentioned by many, many people, the strongest border security bill that has passed Congress. And it's been over in the Senate since last year. And they continue to ignore it because they have wanted, chosen to ignore the problem. You saw it play out just days ago in the Senate when we sent over articles of impeachment for Secretary Mayorkas, who has failed miserably in his job of protecting America's homeland. That's his job. He is the Homeland Security Secretary, and you've seen him here on Capitol Hill testifying that our border's secure. It would be laughable if it wasn't so insulting to millions of Americans who know that's a lie. Our border's not secure, and in fact, since Joe Biden took office and took actions to open up our border, we've seen millions come across. Is it 8 million? Is it 10 million? The number we know is at least that high if not higher. We know people on the terrorist watch list have come into our country because we've caught some of them, but we haven't caught all of them. We see thousands of Chinese nationals of, mili of military age coming into our country. Now, do you think they're coming in here to help be a part of the American dream or coming to undermine it? We know the answer to that question too, which is why we continue to press our colleagues on the other aisle, our colleagues in the Senate, and of course, Joe Biden in the White House to get serious about this issue, but they refuse to. We're not going to let this go. We're going to continue to bring this up. Mr. Siskamani brought this bill forward, and we will continue this debate. And if President Biden wants to ignore it, he knows, and the American people know that President Biden has the legal authority today through executive action to secure the border because they watched him use that same executive action to open up the border. He ended Remain in Mexico, which we restore in this bill. He mandated catch and release on our Border Patrol agents who want to secure our border. You talk to them. We've embedded with them. So many of us have gone down to the border and embedded with our Border Patrol agents. And, Mr. Speaker, they will tell you what's wrong. And the things that are needed to fix and secure the border are in this bill. But President Biden doesn't want to fix it because he knows he can fix it with a pen today. He's chosen not to because the far left elements, the radical elements of his party want an open border. And they're clear about it. And the president tries to act like he wants to secure the border, but then when it comes time to actually negotiate, he's nowhere to be found. The voters ultimately of this country are gonna have a say in November. Do they want a secure border or not? Because you've got a clear choice. When Donald Trump was president, we had a secure border and he took those steps. Mexico didn't want remain in Mexico to be the policy at the time. That was asylum, by the way, which is what we're really talking about. It was President Trump who went back to Mexico and said, either you're going to agree to this policy, it's a negotiation between two countries, or there's going to be consequences. And he laid out those consequences. Well, lo and behold, Mexico saw the light. Mexico recognized it made a lot more sense to agree to that policy with President Trump than to suffer the consequences. And so we got Remain in Mexico and it started to solve the problem. And then he ended catch and release. He was building wall. We funded this when we were a Republican majority working with President Trump, funded construction of the wall and hundreds of miles of wall were being built. Joe Biden comes in office and on day one, he mandated the end, the halt of that construction of that wall. The wall was working and Joe Biden knows it and he ended it because he wanted the border open. And so step by step, action by action, Joe Biden's opened the border. He refuses to negotiate with us on fixing the problem. But we're not going to walk away from this. We're going to continue to force this issue, to bring votes to the floor, to press the Senate to take this up. But at the end of the day, if Joe Biden still wants to continue to block this, he still wants to continue to keep the border open, the voters are going to have the ultimate say in November. And I don't think he's going to like the answer. He could do something about it right now, and he refuses to. So ultimately, the people of, the country, of this country will have a say if Joe Biden won't work with us. But we're going to continue to push it. I urge adoption of this piece of legislation that's so important to our national security. And I yield back the balance of my time. I reserve, Mr. Gentlemen Speaker. reserves. Gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, the hypocrisy in this chamber is so thick you could cut it with a knife. Mr. Scalise says H.R. 2 was sent to the Senate 
and the Senate ignores the issue. The Senate didn't ignore the issue. The Senate negotiated, as was mentioned before, a very, very tough immigration bill, the toughest ever negotiated by Senator Lankford, whose reputation is the second most conservative Republican in the Senate. But it didn't pass. Why? Because President, former President Trump said, don't pass anything. Don't pass H.R. 2. Don't pass the Senate bill. I want an issue. I don't want this issue solved. I don't want a solution. I want an issue for the campaign. That's what the president said. Congressman Nels got up and said the same thing. He said, why should we give a win to a Democrat? Unquote. So don't tell me that anyone is serious about H.R. 2. They're not. And H.R. 2 is so draconian, the Senate would not give it more than 32 votes. We know that. We know that H.R. 2 is a fiction in the Senate. We know the Senate negotiated a very strong bill. But that bill could not advance because the president said he didn't want it. And the president, not this president, the former president, Trump, said he didn't want it. And he doesn't want anything to pass on this subject. So don't tell me that the Republicans want a strong immigration bill and the Democrats want open borders. Nobody wants open borders. And there's something else. The Republicans rightly decry the catch and release policy where someone claims asylum and is then released into the country for years till, an asylum, till a trial date comes up to hear whether, to decide whether that asylum claim is valid and should be granted or whether the person should be deported. And that really is intolerable. But President Biden suggested, proposed a solution. The solution is very simple. He proposed an appropriation. I forget the amount, but an appropriation that would be sufficient so that those trials would be held in a matter of weeks, not years. So that if someone claimed asylum, he has a right to claim it, he has a right to an adjudication. The adjudication would take place in several weeks. And if the person's ca case was valid, asylum would be granted. And if the person's claim was not granted, he'd be swiftly deported. So you wouldn't have what they call this invasion. It's not an invasion. This country is composed of people who came from immigration. In 1900, there were 10,000 a day. And they created the current United States, probably the ancestors of the most of the people in this country. Immigrants are not a curse. They are a blessing. And we need them for our economy. But we need a legal system. And the legal system can only occur if the adjudications can occur quickly, and the president proposed the means of doing that, and the Republicans rejected that. So they rejected, they rejected that, they rejected HR, they rejected the tough bill in the Senate because as President Trump said, I don't want a solution, I want an issue for the campaign. I yield back. I reserve, I'm sorry, I reserve. Gentleman from New York reserves. Gentleman from Alabama is recognized. I yield one minute to the distinguished gentlelady from uh, Texas, uh, Ms. Jackson Lee. Well, we know what we are here the for. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized. I unanimous consent to speak to the House. So I wanted to say as much time as I might consume. But in any event, um, I thought we would come here today and have a reasoned uh, opportunity uh, to address this question. Let me be very clear. I've been in this body long enough to say that we have had a time where members have been here and we have had control of the border in the interpretation that my Republicans might say. Uh, we've had a flow of immigrants, we've had processes, uh, and we've had challenges. And we've spoken to the issue of providing funding uh, for these challenges. Here's what the issue is. The issue is that we have a past president who sees uh, in his uh, jurisdiction and career to block uh, the flow of immigrants who are building uh, and continue to work with us uh, in working on this nation. They come from Ukraine. Uh, they may come from Israel. They may come from 
Palestine. They may come from Taiwan. Those individuals need. Mr. Speaker, I, I yield the gentlelady an additional minute. Ladies recognized for one minute. Those individuals need processes and they need funding. We won't even give them war funding. And as a member of the Homeland Security Committee, I can tell you that the issue is that we're not bringing groups together who are fleeing persecution, which is what we're seeing uh, in the individuals coming to the country now, fleeing persecution. We want to reject them. We want to reject the funding. When I was on Homeland Security, we did not do that. We provided for the NGOs. It is shameful for us to think that we can live in this country and reject the NGOs, the non-governmental entities, who are helping uh, those who are in need. That's how we did our work. And when we did our work, we would be able to solve the problems, and those problems would be helping NGOs. Those problems would be making sure uh, that we gave dollars uh, to the agencies like uh, the Catholic Charities. Can anyone believe that we don't give money to the Catholic Charities anymore? And so the, the call that we have today, Mr. Speaker, and to my good friend, uh, the whip of the House, working with our whip, Ladies time is Honorable Catherine um, the, Ladies time is Clark, is that Gentleman we need to work to help those who are most desperate and ladies, most poor time to be able expired. to make a difference. We are not doing that, and we are rejecting <clears throat> the mission of York. this nation, and that is to be able to help this nation. We're not doing Gentleman that. We're Alabama only whining and complaining. We're Let's get to, to work close and, I and pass a bill that will pass. I'm sorry, could you repeat what you said? Prepare to close and we reserve. Close. Gentleman from New York is prepared to close, as is the gentleman from Alabama. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Mr. Speaker, if House Republicans were serious about addressing the situation at the border, they would work with Democrats on bipartisan legislation that could actually become law, as they did in the Senate. But time and again, Republicans have proven that they want the issue more than they want solutions. So here we are again, taking up virtually the same draconian bill as before, knowing that if it actually passes the House, it will surely go nowhere in the Senate. In a Congress that has broken records for its chaos, dysfunction, and lack of accomplishments, this debate is one more for the record books. I urge members to oppose this cruel and inhumane bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized to Mr. Close. Speaker, we had Sheriff Daniels in judiciary a few months ago now, and he said he had never seen the border as secure as it was in 2018 and never as broken as it is today. Our colleagues across the aisle, they often want to set the building on fire and then fund the fire department. We have solutions to the problem on the southern border. It, we're not trying to make this a political issue. It is an issue of our time. The American people see it. And with that, sir, I'd urge passage of 3602, and I yield back. The gentleman from Alabama yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 3602 as amended? As amended. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The gentleman from New York. Does the gentleman request the yeas and nays? I do indeed request the yeas and nays instead of a recorded vote. <laughs> the yeas and nays are duly requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed.